The New York State Civil Service exams are standardized assessments conducted by New York State Department of Civil Service to determine the eligibility and qualifications of candidates seeking employment in various government's position within the state. New York Department of Civil Services exams cover a wide range of job roles and disciplines, including administrative, clerical, technical, professional, law enforcement, and a lot of other positions. The content and format of the exams can vary depending upon the job-specific requirements. The exams typically assess candidates' knowledge, skills, and abilities in relevant job role, as well as their potential to perform effectively in a given position. The New York State Civil Service exams play a crucial role in promoting equal opportunity employment as they help identify the most qualified candidates based on their performance rather than subjective factors. The eligible list of successful candidates who pass the exam provide hiring managers with a pool of qualified candidates to choose from, ensuring that the hiring process is fair and based on merit. Hi there, this is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared and pass an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end, and if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If this video was helpful and you decide to give this video a like, you will help YouTube algorithm to recommend it to others, and we would greatly appreciate it. And if you choose to subscribe to Online Training for Everyone, you will find relevant videos to help you get ahead in your career and will be able to improve your intelligence, IQ, and get ready and pass any test. One important note. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for this particular assessment, make sure to check the links in the descriptions and in comments of this video to know about the premium options to get you prepared. And now let's go ahead and get started so we can get you ready for the assessment test. What's interesting about the question I'm about to present you is that it truly tests your analytical skills. You need to determine which number comes next in the sequence, and you're presented with the sequence of six numbers where seventh number is missing. The sequence is 23, 11, 20, 12, 18, 14, and then comes the missing number, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17. Choice B, 16, choice C, 22, and last but not least, choice D, 20. Take a close look, maybe do mental math calculations to see if you can come up with the answer. Seems unsolvable, isn't it? But be sure that the answer will look so simple as soon as I reveal it, just like in the magic trick. Maybe give yourself additional 15 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? Because on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. If you are a frequent visitor or a subscriber to this channel, you know the rule. And rule is to find the pattern. But in this particular question, there are two independent patterns. Let's look closely so I can share them with you. The numbers 23, 20, 18, and 17 represent first pattern. And the next number is calculated by subtracting decrementing number from the previous number. Let's look at the example. 23 minus 3 equals 20. 20 minus 2 equals 18. You see that the 3 is decremented by 1 to get to 2. The next number is calculated as 18 minus 1, which is decrement from 2, equals 17. The even numbers, 11, 12, 14, and then the missing number, are calculated using the different pattern. In fact, the opposite pattern, where instead of decrement, we use increment. Let's look at the examples. 11 plus 1 equals 12. Then we increase 1 by additional number, and we increment 12 by 2, which leads us to a result of 14. Then the next number, the missing number, is calculated as 14 plus 3, which would be equal to 17. So the correct answer here is choice A, 17. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's a very interesting question where you need to read the passage and answer the question. Let's start with the passage. As a TSA, Transportation Security Administration Officer, 
Your role is crucial in ensuring the safety and security of travelers at airports across the country. TSA officers are responsible for screening passengers and their belongings, detecting and preventing potential threats, and maintaining order in the airport environment. To perform this job effectively, officers must possess combination of skills including attention to detail, effective communication, and the ability to remain calm under pressure. After reading the passage, you're presented with the question, what are the main responsibilities of a TSA officer? And you have four different choices to select from. Choice A, check in passports and visas of travelers. Choice B, ensuring the timely departure of flights. Choice C, screening passengers and their belongings. And last but not least, choice D, assisting with baggage claim services. Did you figure it out? I think you did because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The correct answer here is choice C, screening passengers and their belongings. This is the answer to the questions, what are the main responsibilities of TSA officer? The reason this is the correct answer is because passage clearly states that one of the main responsibilities of TSA officer is a screening of passengers and their belongings. What's interesting here is that while some other options might be part of the airport operations, they're not directly related to the primary role of the TSA officer. Was your answer the same as mine? If not, please make sure to share your answer and post your solution in comments so we can all learn. I love this question because it really boosts your IQ and improves your intelligence. You're presented with three rows of objects. Each object represents a square and circle inside. You need to select the missing object out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I have full confidence that you figured it out by now. And this is why I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To better solve this challenge, let's assign columns and rows to each object here in the picture. We will have columns A, B, and C, and rows 1, 2, and 3. This would allow us to reference objects better. As you might have guessed, each row describes the pattern of ball bouncing against the wall. Let's start by looking at the object A1. This is where the ball in the upper left corner and it moves downwards toward the middle of the bottom section. And this is where exactly we see the ball in the object B1. After that, ball bounces and moves upward and this is how we see it in C1. When ball bounces against the wall, it travels in the direction based on the angle of the initial impact. After the initial impact, the ball will continue moving in the new direction until acted upon by another force, such as hitting another wall or an object. Let's confirm this pattern by looking at the row 2. In the object A2, we see the ball against the left wall. Then it moves toward the bottom wall and then bounces against the bottom wall and then moves toward the right wall. Knowing the pattern, we can easily detect the answer now. If you look closely at the picture, the ball in the row 3 moves from the position 1 to the position 2 and then to the position 3. So the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? Or maybe you know the tips how to solve these problems better. Please make sure to post and share them in comments so we can all learn. Here's the question you will definitely enjoy solving. You're presented with eight letters and you need to determine the next letter in the sequence. The letters you see are D, J, F, M, A, M, J, J, and then comes the missing letter, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, J, choice B, A, choice C, F, and choice D, M. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I'm going to give you a quick hint. Try to solve the pattern by thinking about Christmas and then New Year and then think what comes next. I hope this hint was helpful because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, the sequence represents the first letters of each month, starting from December. This is why I started with Christmas. Then comes January. This is why I mentioned New Year. Then February, March, April, May, June, July, 
and as you might have guessed, the next month would be August, which starts with A. So the correct answer here is choice B, A. I truly hope that you came up with the correct version of the answer on your own, and if you didn't, learn how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently, you might be presented with the question where you need to determine the relationship. This is one of these types of questions. You need to determine if CEO is to the company as choice A. Quarterback is to football. Choice B. Director is to a movie. Choice C. Conductor is to orchestra. Choice D. Pilot is to plane. Or choice E. Chef is to restaurant. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right relationship. This is not an easy question, but keep in mind that you have a choice of pausing this video and maybe thinking about it for 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let me share with you my version of the answer, and obviously if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To understand the answer to this question, we need to understand who the CEO is. And the CEO, which stands for Chief Executive Officer, is responsible for making strategic decisions and overseeing the overall operations for the company. Knowing this information, let's build an analogy. CEO is to a company, is as a leader to the organization. In the next step, let's look at the choices we're presented with and build similar analogies. For example, quarterback is to football, is as a leader to the type of the sport. Choice B, director is to a movie, is as a leader to the final product of work. Choice C, conductor is to orchestra, is as a leader to the team. Choice D, pilot is to a plane, is similar to the leader of the machine. And last but not least, choice E, chef to the restaurant, is as a leader to the organization. As you can see, by eliminating the options that do not maintain the relationship, we found the correct pair of words that represent the correct analogy. Based on this information, the correct answer here is choice E. Chef is to restaurant. Did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments. There is no better question to boost your IQ and brain power. You're presented with three expressions and you need to find the missing item in the third expression. The first expression is B plus D equals F. The second expression is Z minus W equals C. And the third expression is D multiplied by E equals missing item. And you need to find and select the missing item out of four possible choices. Choice A, T. Choice B, S. Choice C, U. And last but not least, choice D, I. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the missing item. I'm going to give you a quick hint here. To solve this challenge, you need to know English alphabet. But it's one of the simplest alphabets available with only 26 letters. Are you ready? Let's move forward, so I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, you really need to have a good understanding of English alphabet. And not just the alphabet, but also analytically understand that you can assign a number for each letter of the alphabet. I already mentioned that there are 26 letters in English alphabet, and this is probably one of the first things you study when you study English. So the letters are would be A, B, C, D, and so on. And you can go forward, and for each letter you can assign the number. For example, letter A will get associated with number 1, letter B will be associated with number 2, C with 3, D with 4, E with 5, and you can continue up to the letter Z, which would be associated with number 26. With this cross-reference, let's see if we can get a better conversion between letters and numbers. For example, expression B plus D equals F, in reality, after conversion, would be 2 plus 4 equals 6 which makes mathematical sense. Let's look at the second one. Z minus W equals C would in reality be equal 26, which is the number associated with letter Z, minus 23, which is the number associated with letter W, which would be equal to 3. So the last expression, D multiplied by E, in reality would be equal 4 multiplied by 5, and would be equal to 20, which is associated with the letter T. So the correct answer here is choice A, T. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. 
Here's an interesting cognitive abilities test question to see how well you can deal with abstract concepts. You're presented with three expressions. In each expression, there are shapes and numbers. The first expression is triangle plus triangle equals 6. The second expression is circle plus circle plus circle equals 12. And the third expression is where you have triangle plus circle and you need to calculate the end result of this calculation. Once calculated, you need to select the answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 5. Choice B, 7. Choice C, 9. And last but not least, choice D, 11. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. Are you ready? Let me share with you my version of the answer here. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I mentioned abstract reasoning concepts because you need to associate each shape with the number. For example, in the first expression, we have one triangle plus second triangle equals six. Both triangles are the same, which means that the one triangle's number can be calculated and associated with number three. We can do similar math with the circles. Three circles equal 12, which means that one circle would be equal to four. So triangle equals three, circle equals to four, and triangle plus circle would be equal to 7. So the correct answer here is choice B, 7. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Here's one of my favorite questions where you need to look at the image and calculate the missing number. You're presented with four triangles. One triangle in the middle is larger than the others and it has number 3 inside. There are three other triangles at the tips of the big triangle. The numbers inside those smaller triangles, if we start with the bottom right triangle, are 5, 9, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 13. Choice B, 15. Choice C, 17. And last but not least, choice D, 21. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations and make the right choice. Did you figure it out? I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. If you are a frequent visitor to this channel, you know the rule. And the rule is, to complete the calculations and solve the challenge, you need to understand the pattern. And the pattern here is very simple. It's a counterclockwise navigation when you do the calculations. You start with the smallest number 3, and then calculate number 5, calculate number 9, and then calculate the missing number. In this pattern, to calculate the next number in the sequence, you need to double the previous number and subtract 1. Let's look at the example. The first number is 3. To calculate the next number, we need to add 3 plus 3, then subtract 1, and the end result of this is 5. Let's go to the next number. 5 plus 5 minus 1 equals 9. That's how we got the number on top in the small triangle. And now let's calculate the missing number. 9 plus 9 minus 1 equals 17. So the correct answer here is choice C, 17. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your rationale and solution in comments. Here's one of those types of questions where if you are a frequent viewer in this channel or maybe even a subscriber, you will be able to solve easily. You're presented with three patterns, 1 by 2 plus 3, 2 multiplied by 3 plus 4, 3 multiplied by 4 plus 5, and then comes the missing pattern you need to detect and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 3 by 5 plus 4. Choice B, 4 by 5 plus 6. Choice C, 1 by 3 plus 4. And last but not least, choice D, 5 multiplied by 2 plus 3. Take a close look to see if you can detect the pattern. Are you ready? The key is not to overthink this problem. And to detect the pattern, you need to look at the number in the left column. If you look closely, you will see that the numbers in the left column are 1, 2, and 3. Which means that the next number in the sequence should be number 4. If you look closely, you will see that the numbers in expression increment by 1 with each math operation. So that the number in the final expression would be 4 multiplied by 5 plus 6, which matches the choice B. Did you get to the same answer? 
If not, please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your spatial reasoning. You're presented with the three-dimensional view and you need to select view from the opposite side out of four possible choices. The choices are A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can select the right solution. Please look closely as it may not be as easy as it seems. Are you ready? Because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, obviously, please make sure to post in comments. If your answer to this question was choice C, you answered it correctly. There are four objects on the original three-dimensional image. We have a duck, we have a basketball, we have a smartphone, and we have a hammer, which is barely noticeable on the original picture. And the easiest way to solve this challenge is to select one object and track it on the opposite side. I selected a duck, but you can as well select a hammer or a smartphone. It is a little bit harder with the ball because it's in the middle and it's a symmetrical object. So let's go back to the duck. If you look at the original image, you see that the duck is looking to the left and it is on the left side of the ball, which means that if we look from the opposite side, the duck will be looking to the right and would be on the right side of the ball. We frequently see these types of questions on the test, so to help you solve these types of challenges, here are the views of these objects from a different sides. Take a look at these objects from the right, from the left side, and take a look at this set of objects when duck and the ball have changed the position. I wanted to ask you, did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments as well as you can supplement it with some tips on how to solve these types of challenges. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.